So recently I installed a generator and I went into this really not knowing what I was doing or what I would need. So after doing some research and talking to an electrician, I determined the proper way to do it and I managed to do that successfully. So I'll just tell you what you need and then how to hook things up. So one of the things you're going to need is a generator panel. It's very similar to your typical circuit breaker panel, except this has two breakers side by side with this little toggle mechanism. So only one can be on at a time. This is the house power and this is the generator power. So if I flip that up, this would automatically hinge, knock this one off as this one comes on. So that's quite useful to prevent any kind of voltage feedback to your primary circuits. So that's the concept of the generator panel. And then you will need to get some circuit breakers for the circuits that you want to use during a power outage. So this one's a water pump. This one is for the internet. This one is for a fridge. This one's for a freezer. And this one is just for some additional lighting. So it won't be completely dark when the power's out. And while I'm here, I may as well show you some other things you'll need. This cable is a 8 gauge cable and it comes over here and connects to this 60 amp breaker. So it's two phase or it has 240 volts. So this is 120 and the black is 120. And also on that cable is a ground and a neutral. So those go up here and attach to the ground bar. And another cable that you're going to need, this one doesn't need to be quite as thick if your generator is say 30 amps maximum. So this is a 10 gauge cable. It has three conductors with a ground and I'll just open this up so you can see what I mean. So, this is where the mains come in, so your typical house power. So that goes here to the 60 amp breaker, the red and the black, and then the neutral comes up here, attaches to the neutral bar, and then the ground comes up and attaches to the ground bar. And here is the generator power. So here we are with the red and the black, which come from the orange cable here. And then the white goes to the neutral bar, and the ground goes to the ground bar. All right, and the circuits you see here, so the water pump, the internet, freezer, fridge, all that stuff, they were originally attached over here to where these white things are. That was just so I knew which ones to pull when all the power was out. So before removing these circuits, I would recommend pulling this down to turn off all the house power. So it's safer to remove wires and everything. All right. So that being said, I had to pull the hot and the neutral and the ground and then pull the wire out of the top of this, run it over through here, and then bring them down. I still need to nail these in place, but I brought them down connected them in here, so hot, neutral, and ground. Alright, hopefully that all made sense. It's a little complicated. So any circuits you want during a power outage, you'll have to disconnect here, run them over, bring them down, and set up your own circuits. So typically they'll be running off of your house power, so that's the first circuit breaker. And then here, this is your generator circuit breaker. So if the power goes out, you can turn on your generator and use those circuits. Now I'm going to show you some other things you're going to need. So of course you're going to need a generator. This one is 6,000 watts. And from that generator, if you're connecting it to your house, all you need is this connector here. It has four connectors. One is for the one of the 120s, the other is for the other 120, one is for neutral, and one is for ground. So, you'll need to purchase one of these cables. 
and that may depend upon the generator you purchase. So I'll put a link in the description below for this cable, but I'm not going to say 100% this is what you're going to need in case you get a different kind of generator. All right, so you need the generator, of course, and then a cable. And then you run this cable over to here, and you'll need to purchase one of these guys, which just attaches to the outside of your house and that connects to the orange cable I showed you on the inside of the house so that runs through the wall so you have to drill a hole through your wall probably cinder block or cement something like that so you have to drill through that and bring your cable in the top or the bottom here or you could run it in the side there's holes for either side there if you need it and that's how you would attach your generator to that orange cable there's some screw mounts in there for you to attach the orange cable to the four positions there. And I'll just pull this guy so you can see what it looks like. So there are four connectors here which connect to these guys. So I believe this is the ground, one of the hots, the other hot, and then the neutral I believe is how this all configured there. So that is how it works. And I think I covered everything, and I'll put links for all the stuff that I used in the description below. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please let me know. It's quite a task, but when the power's out, it's quite useful to have.